I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to continue my series on physical modeling. I said I probably wasn't going to do any more, but I found something new, so I will. So before I went over how you could use the exciters with the motor filters or the resonators, but there's actually something new in the resonator I want to show you. So I have the exciter here in this, but that's not what I want to show you. So let's go into the resonator. Everything looks the same. It's playing a note. If I turn the feedback up, it'll sound more like a string, like this. Okay. Now, let's go here. One thing you'll probably notice is this all pass. Like, what is this? What's the difference? And if I turn it on and I have the resonance all the way up, probably don't notice anything. So, on, off, sounds the same. But listen as I turn down the resonance. So you hear it really changes, and it's not only the pitch that's changing, but also it's the harmonics. So when it's at 100% or when it's off, the harmonics are perfectly aligned the way they should be if it's, you know, a, a perfect signal or perfect string. But, of course, in real life, strings aren't perfect. Things that can affect them are, like, the age of the string or if it's very, th uh, maybe it's too thick or if it's tightly wound, etc. Those can affect it. When it's bowed, that doesn't happen. But when it's plucked or hit, this can make a big difference. And so this can actually simulate it. So if I do this, let me make a lower sound so you can hear it. If you turn this up, it almost sounds like a spring. So if you're, like, if you're like me and you're old, you probably remember as a child they had those kind of spring door stops and they'd make that type of sound. And this can also be used for other things like uh, metal bars, etc. And you'll notice here the frequency will also adjust uh, the sound like this. So you can adjust those two to create all sorts of new sounds. And of course, these can be modulated per voice you see here. So you can add things there if you want to do that. I'll try to show you me one thing here. So if you turn this uh, all the way up, which you might want to do, uh, you can still adjust things here even at 20,000. Uh, one thing you'll probably notice is here, you'll hear like a spike or a resonance at 100, which I'll try to show you with a equalizer quickly so you can just see on the graph so if you look at around 100 hertz so hopefully you saw that i don't know if you did but at around 100 hertz there's always something there and no matter what you do it's going to be audible or if i move it up even more it almost sounds like ring modulation. Now, of course, if you put it down really low, you can like leave it there and I can just filter it out afterwards and it's no problem. But if it's in the audio range like here, you're going to hear it. No matter what. That sounds like ring modulation. Sometimes you want that and it's cool and sometimes you don't want that. But I found if you move it up to 20,000 hertz like this, you can't really hear it, but you can still get the same effect. So you hear it, but it sounds like the pitch is changing. And it's doing more than that. It is actually adjusting the harmonics, although it's a little bit uh, subtle. So I'll show you maybe like two demonstrations. So the first one, I'll just play octaves in the low register like this. But if I turn it on and decrease the resonance, you should be able to hear something that they're out of tune. It almost sounds like phasing. It's really cool, and it probably reminds you a little bit of like a piano or something, which it should. So that's one of the cool things about this. If you're trying to like make a, a piano sound, you can do that with this. And uh, another maybe thing I'll show you is if you look here, I'll move this up a little bit. 
you'll notice it at you, as you go up, it's more and more out of tune. So here's one C. Only one cent out of tune. That's not too bad. Two cents. Four cents. Eight cents. So you see, as we're going up, it's becoming progressively more and more out of tune. And real pianos actually do this, which is why you need to uh, use like stretch tuning for the pianos. So you can get that kind of like a realistic sound to it uh, using this. And I'll show you one more thing we can do with the resonator here. So if I turn the feedback down just a little bit and low pass down, and let's just put the frequency down in the lower register. We can create almost like a percussive timpani style sound like this. Let me turn the low pass down a little bit more and put, turn the low pass in down a bit more like this. Okay, it's not quite a timpani, but it's almost like a, some type of a drum. So you can make these types of sounds using the resonator too. There's actually lots of different sounds you can come up with using this. And of course, with the modulation, there's all sorts of possibilities. But I hope this gave you just a basic idea of what you can do with this. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about it, leave me a message down below and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Until next time, see you.